ko rangi nui kei runga, ko papa tua nuku, kei raro, ko te ao mārama, ki wainga nui ti hei mauri ora. Ah, ka mihi rā ki ngā tini mate, ah, ko whetu rangi ki te pō, ah, ngā kōrero te pō, ko te pō ki a rātau, ah, e ao, ko te ao ki a tātau, ah, ki ngā waihotanga, tēnā tātau. Ah, ko ai tātau, ah, ko maro tiri te maunga, ko mangā hauini te awa, ko te whānau a rua taupare, e te whānau a te ao tāwarirangi ngā hapū, a ko ngā tipurau te iwi. Kei aku taha, te tua kana a Tainui Forrester, te tua hine, Hoana Forrester, te tua kana anō, a Regan Fairley, a me tō tātou nei, ranga tira. Te hoa tāne o te e nei, tō tātou ranga tira nei. Ori ata Raihania Ko tātou tēra I only just got here whānau So ke te Maharahara tonu au Ki taku haerega We came all the way from Huiarua Ki konei I tēnei rangi tonu And check our flash t-shirts out So we don't get lost Anyway, ko tātou tēnei Ko taka mau ki a hau te whakamārama Ko ai tātou So how do we become us? So first I want to acknowledge, I'll go back, um, the Ngātohu project, um, which was run by uh, Manaki Te Awanui, so Manaki Te Awanui tēnā koutou, uh, started us on this journey towards where we are now. So we started off with the Ngātohu project, which got us in the door and got us working together within our taio. And as Matua Wayne says, that sort of has come to an end. And where to next for us came along. And as we hui, we're sort of thinking, hey, come on, we've got all these things happening in our taio. We've been hammered by all kinds of weather events. I think the coast was one of the first to get a red wa weather <coughs> warning or red rain warning. And our landscape changed before our eyes. Mm -hmm. So we come together and we think, how do we know what's going on? How do we reconnect with our taio so we know what's going on. And to get anywhere, well, you've got to have a path. You've got to follow that path to get to there. So that's how we come up with um, arahanga, a path to reconnect us to our taio. So after many wānanga, we sort of come up with that. Te ara hei tūhono anō i a tātou ki tō tātou taio. Why? So we can know what's going on within our tile with the many changes that have happened. Um, just in saying that this isn't just us, we've got a pretty big group, who each and one of us um, whānau members are also within our rōpū. So for example, uh, one of our uh, tamahine are pretty sharp on the old rorohiko and um, creating different things. So our tohu there was created by one of our tamariki in our rōpū. So it's a, it's a whānau a fear, a whānau mahi, yeah, and we're all at the waharoa still, um, waiting to be called on to our ara to get to where we want to be to reconnect to our taio. So that's, that's us, arahanga taio, te ara hei tūhono anō i a tātou ki tō tātou taio. Ka nui taku pahu pahu, ka tukuna te mea kōrero. A tēnā tātou. Um, this is Tokomaru Bay. This is Tokomaru Ako, uh, Tokomaru Bay. Um, it's our hidden paradise uh, in the Tairawhiti in the Ngati Puro region. Um, nearly every home in Tokomaru Bay is beachside, uh, and in the backyard, if you look at the back, uh, it's you'll see farmland, native trees, and uh, streams. So. Um, quite the perfect place to live as a child. Um, all five of us are results of born and raised in Tokomaru Bay. Um, we fuck a papa to the land and we're lucky to be raised around strong culture and identity. Now we're raising our children. We're raising our children in Tokomaru Bay and we're doing the same thing, um, if not a little bit more than what our whānau had raised us under. Um, so now our mission for Arahanga Taiao is to 
sustain the same kind of setting that we were used to as children, if not in a better state. So, yeah, kia ora. Oh. Kia ora tato. So, uh, what you can see on this image here is um, State Highway 35, as we're proudly wearing today, um, and not such a proud state. Uh, so that's the Mangahoni River, you can see, and it's uh, devastated uh, State Highway 35, just north of Tokomaru Bay. Uh, so you can see there's a sort of a, a dam created in a, in a pond, or, or a lake that's formed in the river. Um, and so that's after Cyclone Gabriel, and then there just after that there was another heavy rain event. And so if you look at the bottom picture, that's a picture of myself um, heading in to conduct a night overwatch on that dam in case it bursts and um, uh, creates a laha in our community. And so leading up to the decision making processes, which made me um, walk in, in through the night, um, so we had to evacuate um, families from their homes. Um, Karodia is one of those whānau. Um, I think we evacuated 60 homes um, into out of their homes and into a safer place uh, for the evening due to the amount of rainfall that was predicted. Um, so we didn't come up with the modelling or the science which um, the council provided to us and so that decision was we had no part in that and then so that's part of what we do we're trying to um, empower our whanau um, to make uh, be informed to make those kinds of decisions instead of other people coming into our community and telling us um, what to do within our own communities um, so no no whakohoki te mana ki ngā tangata so yeah that's a little bit about that slide so that's the vulnerable whenua um, the landslides come down um, Right now, we still don't know what the state of our why is in our community, in our hapuri. Um, and with that is the responsibilities. So who is the responsible people um, to, in, in, to engage in that mahi? And we feel it's up to us with our, within our hapuri, our community, to um, empower our people, give them the tools, the knowledge, the pukenga, uh, in order to make better informed decisions uh, for our whanau. Oh, well, carrying on from what Horiata was just saying, um, it started off with all these rainfall events which transformed our, our awa. So just thinking back to what it looked like before, and Juana talked a little bit about that, um, you know, you can imagine a nice flowing, gently flowing awa. The things you hear are kids swimming, splashing, playing, fano all around the awa. At night you'd see torches, going up and down the awa looking for tuna um, and just hearing that nice flow, you hear birds, all this life around it. During the storms, well, it was a whole different beast. We, all we could hear was rocks being thrown around. What we could see was logs going end over end, pines, poplars, all sorts, manuka getting ripped off the sides end for end and smashing into the banks which caused more erosion. So some of the, the erosion during the storms was amazing and it wasn't really visible until it all settled down a couple of days later. The smells during the storm, if you've been in a, in a big weather event, you can smell parafenua, you know, you can smell it coming before it actually reaches you. So these are all those little things going on during the storms. After, well, these are some of the photos to show, we're just left with a whole lot of questions. What's still alive? What can we do with our awa? Is, it, is the Modi still there? Are the tuna still there? How are we going to get it back to, you know, what Juana said about getting it back to how, how we remember? How are we going to help our awa? We're never going to build things to fix it, but how can we help? Our tile become the tile that we remember again. So this is sort of where our whole kaupapa comes from, is our awa. How do we help that? If our awa and water is healthy, everything else falls in, into place and is also healthy. So that's a little 
sniff it. I know we, we're strapped for time. I can see the two minute um, clock flowing. So that's a little, little bit of a quarter. Or so what we're left with is questions. And then we're hoping our whānau here um, and our wider whānau can help answer some of those questions or build a plan to answer and help some of that stuff that's going on today. Sure, um, so looking at this picture, so we've come down through off the land, down through the rivers and out into the sea now. And you can see straight away that everybody's access to kai, because all out there are all, all our fishing grounds, um, our kapata kai for our kai moana, and you can see you can't even get anywhere. Um, the woody debris, and we use woody debris, but the, the name back home is Slash. Um, and I'm not too sure whether you've seen, but that was one of the most publicised um, events that happened through Gabriel, was the destruction that occurred. And when we look at that, you know, you can say there's heaps of logs. You could maybe say there's tons of logs, but there was thousands of tons of logs. There were islands of logs floating in our ocean. And when the Navy came down to drop off supplies to us, they couldn't get in. There were just, there were mats of logs right out, kilometres out to sea. So we were left most indefinitely isolated. Um, and we kind of, figured in those times like we we had been through COVID so we had plans in place to look after each other and we had been through that um, but really that resilience to be able to handle that on our own um, was great and to see everyone come out on top but now now we're left with the destruction and, and that loss of Modi. The sediment you can even you can see the colours changed um, and we're now over a year past that event and it's only just starting to clear the sediments being there. It was brown, dark brown for maybe six months. Uh, it was grey for another three and it's only just starting to turn back to a greeny blue. Um, so it's been a long, long process. Um, we, for the first time, have started to get shellfish poisoning. Um, so after Gabriel with the load of nutrients and, and sediments that went out, uh, into spring, when spring hit, we started getting algae blooms for the first time. First time our people have remembered seeing those orange algae blooms and the bioluminescence at night time. And now we are still uh, suffering from the shellfish poisoning. Um, whether they're linked, um, we don't fully know. We don't really know those answers. And again, um, we sort of need to be able to have those tools to answer those questions as well. So what problems are we facing? Um, as uh, Motua Wayne has already said, they're an isolated community, um, same as us uh, up in Tokumari Bay on the coast. Um, you know, we, we de we're dependent communities on, we've been made dependent on other people to help us. Um, so what we're trying to do is um, give our, our whānau the tools and, and empower them with the, the skills necessary to um, be self-dependent. Um, and along that journey is that connection to the taio. Um, as Juana has said, we all grew up um, you know, swimming in the rivers, running on the beaches with no logs and slash on it, and you know, swimming in the ocean, going to Haere Kitikohi um, Kai Moana. And that's our connection to the taio. Um, what we're seeing now is um, these children that haven't seen the beach without any um, logs on the no, that's, you know, we, we haven't felt that, but our, our tamariki and mokopuna, uh, they're the ones that are being left with the, um, the mess, uh, so to say, from all these um, serious um, weather events that we've been encountering, and you know, there's still more to come. And so what we're trying to do is yeah, create the ara for our mokopuna and the future of our hapori to um, have that connection to the taio, um, and through limited well, through the limited amounts of monitoring that we've seen um, that um, outside or NGOs bring into our community, um, where does that mātauranga go? We, we, we don't have it, so by undertaking our mahi, um, we're going to um, hold that mātauranga within our communities for ourselves to use at a, at a future date. 
uh, much like some of the previous slides in Kōrō Kai Kōrō have already said. Kia ora. I see I'm the only one that never remembered what slide mine, mine is, so that's why my name's in the corner. <laughs> um, so, our kaupapa. So now here we are, and like what was said this morning, um, we know the problems, we know we've got problems, but we've got we've to make our way out of it. We've got to get our way out of it. We've got to restore that modi, restore our mana, and bring back those times that Juana remembers. So how are we going to do that? Nah. Um, I mean, everyone's alluded to it, eh? We need to re-establish that pathway. We need, like what Matua Wayne was saying, um, getting our tamariki back out there. It's been said a number of times today, getting out and feeling it, listening to it, watching it, smelling it, eh? getting back out into the, into the taiao where the problems are, and that's where we can solve them. Um, and Juana will talk more about that later, about some of the methods we've been thinking about along those lines. Um, the decision making and solution implementation, Horiata has said it a number of times already, because we're not the ones that are, are doing the monitoring, because we're not the ones that are making the decisions, we're at everyone else's mercy. And we're like that at the moment. You know, there's, We don't know when people are coming to fix the roads, we don't know when people are coming to fix the rivers, the streams, the bridges. We're just at the mercy of everybody else. And, and I think we're, we're done with those times. Eh? We want to be able to make those decisions for ourselves and be informed properly, have the right data so that we can make those decisions ourselves. Um, and, and to be innovative enough too to create the solutions. And we're there and we feel it and, and I think that we know what's best for us and how to fix that with the help of other, others as well. Um, yeah, so leading into that, enabling us to undertake our own monitoring just to give us a baseline. We've already been through this and we don't have a baseline. Okay, so we're, we're starting on the back foot. Um, but a very smart man, Conrad, said to me today, well, any monitoring is better than no monitoring. So let's start some monitoring. Uh, kia ora anō. Uh, this is our whārau. So this is our whārau concept. And just probably to tautoko what Waiaria said, puta tu ki waho. Go outside and observe. Kawai and what Matua Wayne said, ma, ma te mahi ka mohio. So it's really to be more connected in our taiao, uh, in our surrounding taiao, close to us in our backyards, just down the road, the nearest stream, um, and go and have a, have a walk down at the beach. So our whareau is our concept for whānau having wānanga in our taiao. So whareau is a space in our environment where we can observe, analyse and plan. Uh, we've used the bonfire. The bonfire is like just a symbol of when we go and share, share stories, when we go and um, reconnect with our whānau, when we talk about problems or gossip or anything like that, that's where the, the your valuable talking happens. And that's that could possibly be a time where you, where you kind of like talk about a plan, a plan to improve things if so need to be. Um, it's a way for us to learn with each other and it's a way for people to have a, to have a voice, um, what's happening in their space. There's all different problems. Um, where there's a problem, there's like, uh, as long as there's good quality discussions and maybe a plan could, could come about. Um, so the, these three photos show, um, you know, special, everyone can relate to the bonfire, the warmth, the intimacy, you know, out in our taiao, on our beach, next to the stream. Um, the next one is uh, our kazi. He's, um, you know, when we use our land resources, but we also learnt um, valuable um, mātauranga from our tūpuna on how to make a hāngi, how to cook a hāngi. How, and then after the hāngi, we share with whānau. Then more kōrero happens. Ka boy. And that's all outside too. The third one is a very special one. Um, that's uh, a papa and his mokopuna. That's my dad. And our house is right there. And he's sharing what he probably shared with me when I was little. But now he's sharing that with his mokopuna. That mokopuna is 21 years old now. And dad's passed. So it is one of those moments where 
oh, it's a special moment for when you're trying to teach someone else. They'll always remember it. They'll remember that beautiful But even if it's just eating lamb's tails, the filthiness, the sand between your toes, the smells, so it's all those feels, eh? The, the tiro tiro and the, the pūmahara, like my Wain had, had talked about. So it's, um, it's very special, our taiao. And our kids deserve to have those same memories that we've had back in the days. Kapoi? That's me. So part of our uh, whakaru for establishing what we're up to, we went back to whakapapa. Everything starts with a whakapapa. It's our connection to the whenua, to the awa, to the maunga, to our relations who are all with us. So it all starts with a whakapapa. Now we understand that the whakapapa of our way at home has missing parts to it. So for us, the whakapapa that we're looking at is the one that's there today. So the, this whakapapa is going to guide us in establishing our whareau sites, where we monitor, where we tiro tiro, where we test um, the things we want to look for, uh, for the koiora and things like that. So within that whakapapa also, they're, they're our river winds through a whole lot of different areas from native regeneration, through pine forest, through farmland, and then finally through Papakainga where people are staying. So there's a whole different, uh, there's a whole lot of different habitats on its way through to the Ngutuawa. So the whakapapa that we're looking for is where these different koiora live and establish our whareau in those places to do our testing and such. So that's just part of our plan and establishing our whareau and our work sites. Kill the whanau. Maramataka. Um, yeah, it's already been spoken to a lot uh, today. And like you, we're all um, intrigued about the maramataka as well. Um, we, well, personally, I don't know that much. And so by including it, you're forced to learn and then because you, you we want to pass on their knowledge the best way to share knowledge is to teach and the best way to understand is to be you know, through teaching so um, it's going to empower us um, to have those uh, that mātauranga behind us uh, to help inform our decision making processes and um, yeah I sort of grew up growing kai in that as well um, maramataka wasn't a kupu, um, that's only a new kupu that's come into our lives, but um, growing up as a little kid, um, <laughs> and, and growing kai um, was a big part of our life. So it um, gives us the timing and stuff, well, which Matu has already uh, spoken to, and, and it's within us. We're, we're, we're migratory people, um, and that's how we got here, and we, we came along with our science, um, a back from way back when, and with with a what came along on the waka um, is the knowledge on how to grow things because in order to thrive in this environment, which we did, um, a we brought that puking out with us, and then it's all transferable. And so what we're trying to do is, you know, we're talking about sustainable living and that kind of caught it also. Um, in order because we're isolated, we have to learn how to grow our own kai or no. I'll say that again, we need to relearn how to grow our kai because it's within us. We can all grow something in our little patch of whenua that we have um, and, and you know, some kai uh, in order to sustain our whanau. Um, and it's also going to um, teach us when the, the high activity uh, moments of the phases are um, in order for us to um, do our um, you know, or our, our research into those koiora and find out where that activity is happening and then it's going to teach us um, what's moving about within our um, awa in those times. Um, and through that we're going to gain our observations and, um, and our indicators. Yeah. Kia ora. Kia ora. Um, yeah, I must have the hard one eh? Yeah. So now we're down to where the, the mātauranga meets the science and I think 
for us, it, it needed to start with the maturanga. It, it needed to go back to hey, the whakapapa o te wai, the whārau, the maramataka, and if need be, and we need to focus in deeper on some of these other elements, uh, what tools can help us? Um, and there are some fantastic tools out there, and that's something that we want to uh, add into this, is what tools can we use as whānau? Um, because there's a lot of scientific tools out there that scientists can use, that, that people and, and organisations with laboratories can use, but what can we use? What can we use at home? Because we're so far away and we're so isolated, we need to find the tools that we can use and that our whānau can, can understand. Um, so that's something that we want to generate. Um, go and look for those tools, test them, see if they work for us in our, in our whārau, and, uh, and then we need to kind of figure out through the data. So when we're getting the data from, those, um, from that kind of monitoring, how do we make that make sense to our whānau? It's a waste of time if we put up a histogram <coughs> or a bar graph and auntie goes, ah, oh yeah, what's that? <laughs> so we, <laughs> we need to figure that out. We need to figure out what the conversation is with our whānau and how they can make sense of that data so that they can make those informed decisions. And that's, that for us is probably one of the most important things is that they then have the information to go and make those changes and implement those solutions. Kapai, so our aim is to have a strong connection. Um, just like what Reg said, we want to try to um, attract a wide range of whānau. We want to attract our mokopuna. We want to attract our school children, our rangatahi and our, our aunties and uncles and our nannies. Uh, that's pretty hard to do sometimes, but uh, with our whārau and some kai, we might be able to do it. But um, that's just probably having a wide range of uh, ways to observe our taiao and to monitor how they see fit. Um, and also what Matua Wayne said again, uh, you did a lot of stuff that I actually quite liked. Um, building a stronger relationship with our taiao um, and through their identity. Like I said, we whakapapa to our land. Uh, if, if I stand over here, that's brother and sister. If, you, if I stand over here, we're cousins. Um, oh, that's my husband. Oh, this is my, <laughs> my, my best, my, my, my best mate at primary school. I put him and him, they're firefighters. Um, if I put him and him, they're surf lifesavers. We've got about 10 portai, but um, we have strong connections and we've got those different groups. So within those different portai, we've got different groups. I'm a teacher. So I have like uh, I have relationships with the tamariki. We all have relationships in those different spaces that we hold, um, but we want it to be a fano um, fano affair, and we want them to be able to take pride in their backyard or just the you know in the in hundred meters hundred meters, and that will just cover quite a bit if you think about it. You know, with four hundred fano. Um, but yeah, that's the strong connection, that's our aim. Um, just about this photo actually, this, this event was probably, well this is a long time ago now, maybe 15, 16 years ago, um, and it was Eke Tangaro. And at the time, this river here uh, in, in Uawa actually was quite um, empty, there weren't a lot of people utilising it. People were coming from afar, from Gisborne, from Napier, to come and utilise this river and our own people weren't there. So at that time, we had a disconnect problem from our awa, from our moana. And um, back then, we decided that the hoi, or the paddle, was our, our way to get people back on um, through waka ama, through um, stand-up paddle boarding. And uh, Hoana used to run a race, Hoana and Horiata used to run a raft race just to get people back on the, on the water. Um, they never won. I always turned <laughs> up and we would win. Um, but Hoana tried to keep changing the rules so that I couldn't win. But anyway, now, now we want to reframe this picture, right? This was, this was getting our people back onto the water. And, and a, the waka hauru was a big part of this as well. Um, but we want to see the same picture in another 10 years time with all those kids and their parents and their grandparents down in the whareau working to restore our whenua and our awa and our moana. Yeah, uh, kia ora Riggs. Um, 
just to clarify, we actually won three years in a row, and then you cheated um, in that RAF race. Uh, so there, so that's the, the kind of connections and stuff we're talking about um, in our local Farno, um, having that localised capacity so um, they have Nanny and Mukupuna can go down to the Awa and gather some information. Um, you know, that's uh, tanga. Um They bring their townie cousins, let's go down to the river. Um, the county cousins are like, ooh, yuck. No, no, that's all good. That's, that's good. Eh, that's actually what we need. Eh, that's restoring and we, we're bringing that back in, in for our, um, to uphold our banks of our awa and stuff. Um, let's go jump off the rocks, uh, all that kind of kōrero. And then through our localised capacity, um, what we've been saying the whole time, it's going to empower our whānau with, with the tools to make those informed decisions for us, by us, for us. Um, too many times uh, during Gabriel, helicopter lands, these people in high visits jump out, and we're there, the Fano on the ground. Um, you know, most of us were part of the civil defence as well. It's like, hey, what are you doing? Where do you need to go? Because they got no waka. Yeah, cool, you can jump in our truck or in our KM or whatever. Take them up, look at the problem. They'll all walk out, and then all the, the drivers will all sit back here in our gun boots and that, and we'll say, yeah, they don't even know what they're up to. And then, and then they'll go over there, walk around with their flash shoes because they didn't bring gum boots. And then they'll, they will see them doing this, and then, and then they will jump back in their in their vehicles and then fly away. And so we don't know what they've talked about, or all that kind of um, stuff. So that's our sort of the yeah, our main focus for us is to um, create that localized capacity, creates jobs for our Fano, brings Fano back, and empowers our people to make those informed decisions. Um, hoi ono, uh, ko te rā tātou. Um, oh, te tahi ono? Ah, no, no, no questions. So yeah, that's us, no, uh, he, okay. he pātai. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it to her to answer all the questions. <laughs> no, you can ask tricky ones because he hasn't done anything. So. of sharing, sharing the Puma here with us. Um, we must have a few questions. Take the opportunity to ask a bit more. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, great. Oh, 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 <laughs> Just because you had all the hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not letting you pull <laughs> Now, I just have one question. This is not, it's not my Papa. My swaggy man asked me during the presentation, how hard to follow what is a whare? Well, whare is a not a permanent dwelling, but a like a puni. He wahi noho mo te wa poto. So our <coughs> thinking behind that is we move to different places mm. on our awa to wānanga those things by using a whare. Mm. Yeah, it's a it's not a permanent dwelling. It's one that can be shifted. It's like a container, Chris. <laughs> you know, like full of monitoring stuff that you can do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on a truck. Like we run a trailer. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> monitors. <laughs> yeah. With a with a ram, Dodge Ram. Dodge <laughs> Ram. <laughs> yeah, that was a big thing for us was to in order for us to be effective we had to be able to move mm. and move our all our all our picking all right. our tools and stuff into those different locations um, in order to um, gather that information. And then so we you know like we've spoken about it's like the best way to do it is be immersed within that environment. Uh, a bit like um, Jason Mamor and Aquaman. Mm. Uh, he's in there, he's immersed. He's very handsome by the way. So there's a kaitiaki as well. Same as us, kaitiaki. Another one more question. Um, what are some of the lessons learned from um, the main climactic, you know, climatic event of Gabriel um, to inform, I guess, the forest owners uh, to potentially mitigate that for our future generations um, mm. in terms of the that, that woody debris? <coughs> Well, I might answer a little bit of that, and then Horiata may answer another another little bit of it, because Horiata works in the forestry, <laughs> and, and I was one of the ones that was protesting about the um, slash. Um, 
But it was a, it was a politically a hard journey. Um, I think uh, even just getting the petition going to uh, for the Gisborne Council to start with, just to get the Gisborne Council to look at it, um, was big. And um, I think when the petition was signed, there was about ten thousand signatures, and a lot of work done by a ex councillor um, because he knew what the council would need and the information that they would need. So really, they. <coughs> They didn't have any other choice but to to take on board what those were um, that the people were wanting. Um, so then the next step was uh, at a high government level, um, which which again was a, was a much bigger political struggle to get an inquiry um, into the slash problem. Um, it was I mean I've never dealt at that kind of level before, but I didn't realise actually how hard that was. Um, if you have a minister that just doesn't want to change, it's, he pretty much can make that decision himself. Mm -hmm. um, so it needed a bit of a tidal wave of, like the logs, it needed a tidal wave of people to push that um, inquiry to go ahead. Um, they have had the inquiry. Um, we started to see some changes now very slowly. Um, <coughs> and I'm not involved now at that higher level. Um, but I understand that some of the forestry contracts or some of the certification around them have been suspended. So it's, we're only just getting there to see what's going to happen long term. Yeah, kia ora. So, yep, I work for a forestry company and although it's provided for my whānau and enabled us to live where we live, um, there are some aspects of the forest industry um, and companies and that ha which have poor practices. Um, I, I'm, I don't I don't work in that side of the forest industry. I'm more in the re-establishment side, so the planting and stuff. So we look at riparians and all that kind of stuff when we're re-establishing um, forest plantations. Uh, we work for the iwi and other um, outside investors who invest in forests within Ngāti Pro and so. Yeah, it's a tricky question. Uh, even my wife and I, we have some strong uh, kōrero at times, and and it's just about um, the people in those positions um, actually being accountable for their mahi um, through all, through the whole process, um, the council and owners and contractors and hey, to me to me to me well, throughout the chain. And so, once there, there is change happening, um, it's like things. It takes a wee while to get going, but um, through you know, future better practices uh, moving forward, uh, we hope to see a lot of change within the forest industry around harvesting, particularly because that's where all that all that um, raru comes from, or the para and the raku that get washed down into the um, through the catchments and, and all the destruction that they create along the way. Um, so even at the moment, there's still stuff sitting there um, in areas, and yeah, so it's not going to be over within the next we while but it's going to take time for it to change and then revert back to um, the, the, the kind of uh, whenua that we would like to see for our mutu whānau e mokupuna. Can I just follow on from Big Day? Like, in your opinion, is there a willingness from the industry to change? I can't speak for every company. Yeah. Um, I can only speak about uh, the stuff that I'm responsible for and the things that I have direct control over within my uh, area of mahi mm -hmm. and um, that's the I can't fully answer that question because the I can't control other people's mahi mm -hmm. I can only I only have a limited amount of what I'm responsible for mm -hmm. um, so on that basis the scope is a huge problem and it needs to change so from your position, albeit the minnow kind of position, might I suggest that you have power still to affect the change in their chain, because that's a corrupt um, position that they hold, mm. and that isn't good for your community. Mm. So how do you, uh, it's not about mitigation, how do you stop their mm. ill practice mm. um, and terminate that, and how do you hold them accountable? Yeah, that's through, well, currently within the courts process at the moment. Um, yep, and there's already been companies in Tairawhiti 
um, that have been fined and stuff. And uh, one company has lost their certification of the, I forget what it's called around um, ec ecolo economically so eco sourced um, blogs type of stuff. And so those companies are not only in Tai Rafati, eh, they're, they're Aotearoa wide. So although Tai Rafati is in the limelight at the moment through all that mahi, um, those same companies have interests throughout Aotearoa, uh, up north, South Island, um, eh, all over the show. And up, we, within our mahi, we only have a small work team. So we, in our work team, we, we try and push a good practices um, for our mahi. So we have seven staff in the, for the mahi I work with. Um, and then, but we're responsible for a lot of stuff. <laughs> Kia ora. <laughs> Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia I would probably, I yeah, I'll probably say it's probably gone right too far for us to answer a lot of the deep forestry questions. Um, if we if we just go back, I think to to what we were talking about in terms of a disconnect, um, I think you know what we really need to do now is we've made mistakes in the past. Um, you know we've allowed forestry, we've allowed farming, and we now need to change that. And I think that this is the pathway back to understanding um, how that land should be used, and that we're teaching our our rangatahi not to make the same mistakes. Fantastic place to wrap up. Mm. Thank you. Um, and that sort of summarises what's been a fantastic afternoon to hear about the Ngāpōpū project, to hear about the science and the process, and, to, and really huge appreciation for you sharing um, how you're making it real on the ground. Um, it's really exciting stuff. So um, I'd like to thank Parahanga Tayo and all of our speakers from this afternoon. Mm. If you are ready,